Good morning. This is Stacy Glosson and Karen Slaughter. Welcome to the special education portion of the 2019-2020 Consolidated Grant Application Training. Should you have any technology issues or any trouble hearing us, if you will put that in the chat box, we are going to try to monitor that so we can help you along the way. Also, the handouts are provided in the link on this screen, but we realize at this time you cannot push the link. So if you will use the URL that is provided to access the handouts, that would be great. We are not going to be reviewing all of the slides in the handout, but we have made it available to you so you can read it in its entirety at another time. Please note also that we will be recording this session. Feel free to submit any questions via chat. However, we will be answering those questions and posting them in the form of an FAQ on the Region 10 Administrative Support for Special Ed Programs website at a later date. Also, to get a direct response to any of your questions, please send those to the emails we have provided for you on the screen. It is uh, my email and then Karen Slaughter's email as well. First, today we'll be going over portions of the consolidated application grant as it pertains to the special ed program area only. And the next slides um, are from the handout coordinated application presentation. All references to the slide numbers are from your PDF handouts. Slides one through six of your handout pertain to the May 13th TEA presentation only. Updates and changes will begin on slide seven. Here are the schedule of events. As you can see, June 3rd is the opening date for the grant application screens. All grants are due no later than September 3rd. However, once an LEA has saved and submitted the contacts page and the SC 5003, the individual program grants can be worked on and submitted independently. Hopefully you have already completed the contacts page. There is no due date for this page which allows the LEA to make changes as necessary. This page must be completed by every LEA and will need to have at least two contacts, one of which must be the, the grantee manager. There can be up to 20 contacts. Please be sure that your contacts are up to date as these are the people TEA will contact should they have any questions regarding your grant applications. The level of access will depend upon the role of each contact. The system will validate for duplication of the fields on the screen. However, the LEA should check for duplicates that the system wouldn't recognize. Slides 11 to 17 show examples of errors that will be missed by the system, as well as an example of a completed contacts page. All LEAs must fill out a contacts page. For LEAs in an SSA, each member district must fill out a contacts page. Remember that although, although there is no due date for the contacts page, it must be completed prior to the special populations 5003 or SC 5003. Additionally, should a contacts information need editing, you would have to return to the contacts screen. Contacts cannot be edited within the application. SC 5003 formula grant consolidated schedule is new. The SC 5003 is located under the special collections tab and is applicable to all grants. It must be completed and certified in order for your available grants to be assessed. The due date is September 3rd. However, remember that it is Remember that is also the due date of your ESSA, CTE, and special ed grants. Therefore, through collaboration of those programs, you do not want to wait until September 3rd to submit this schedule. There is only one SC 5003 per LEA, and it is the intent of the Texas Education Agency that these three programs will collaborate. 
and coordinate on one timely submission that is appropriate for all three program areas. Next, we will cover examples of barriers. This is one area where the application was streamlined. If there are barriers to equitable access and participation to any of the three programs, the barriers will be listed in part one of the SC 5003. This slide shows a small list of possible barriers. However, you can refer to last year's grant to uh, pull pr previous barriers used. For special ed, this replaces the 1819 PS 3400 Equitable Access and Participation Schedule. The applicant will choose either the first option, assuring no barriers exist for equitable access and participation for all grants and all groups, or option two, indicating barriers exist. If option two is chosen, the LEA must list for each barrier the group it applies to, for example, students, parents, or other and a description of the barrier. The description field is limited to 150 characters. According to the Texas Education Agency presentation on May 13th, a barrier is not required and TEA will not be negotiating this schedule. However, TEA recommends that there is at least one barrier for special education. If the LEA listed barriers in last year's grant, the applicant should consider if those barriers still exist and enter the appropriate information. The applicant can use the add line button for additional barriers. The schedule allows for up to 150 barriers. For special education, part two of the SC 5003 replaces the CS 700 provisions, assurances, and certifications. Part 2A includes general guidelines, provisions, and assurances, and lobbying certificate for all programs. The applicant should read the information that is linked on the screen and answer the question regarding lobbying activities. If the answer to question one is yes, then the LEA must indicate in question two which programs lobbying applies to, complete, sign, and submit, the Disclosure of Lobbying Activities form. Part 2B includes program-specific guidelines, provisions and assurances for each of the programs. The applicant should read the information that is linked on the screen. Once the LEA has read and can assure they are in compliance with the information in Parts 2A and 2B, they can che check the box in Part C. Part three of the SC 5003 is for certification and submittal. Remember that this schedule must be certified and submitted prior to any of the LEA's available grants to open. There is only one SC 5003 for each LEA. After submitting, should there be need to change this schedule, the LEA can make an amendment. Slide 23 through 25 are the answers to frequently asked questions. We will not review those slides, but I do wanna call your attention to question two on your screen as a reminder regarding equitable access and participation for special education. As you can see the message on SC 5003 indicating that a barrier for special ed is recommended will be removed. The LEA is to keep the strategies to address all barriers at the local level. Slide 26 is the TEA copyright notice. The following slides are from the handout 10, SPED application presentation handout. Slide two lists your handouts for the special education portion. We will start on slide three. Here are the changes for the grant schedules for the special education program. We have already discussed the contacts page in the SC 5003. As you can see, there were no additional changes other than the PS 3502 private nonprofit schools participation schedule, which was revised. 
slides four through six refer to the SC5003 schedule, which we have already addressed, as we mentioned. Slide seven, once the SC5003 schedule is submitted, eligible grants for that LEA will be accessible under the grants tab in the eGrants application. As a reminder, there will need to be collaboration between the ESSA, CTE, and special education programs so that the SC5003 is submitted with ample time for individual programs to assess, certify, and submit their grant applications. The first schedule to address is the GS2100. The contacts information will be available through a pull-down menu, which is pre-populated from the contacts page. If the contact information needs to be edited, those corrections will have to go through the contacts page tab. If applicants click on the Add New Contact button, they will be directed to the Contacts Page tab. Be sure your contacts are knowledgeable about the grant as they will be who TEA contacts should they have any questions. If you are submitting the application during the summer months, be sure at least one of the contacts on the GS2100 will be available. After saving the GS2100 applicant information, the remaining schedules will be available. After certifying and submitting the Special Education Consolidated Grant application or submitting an amendment to the grant, the LEA should check the GS2300 negotiation comments and confirmation schedule. This is used by TEA if they need additional information, clarification, or have questions. Once the LEA has made the required changes in their grant, the change completed box can be checked. Grantee comments and the accepted by TEA box are for TEA's use only. Additionally, please note the last two bullets on this slide. They state, make sure you recertify and submit your application amendment once you have completed your negotiations, and the schedule will not appear in the table of contents until the initial application is certified and submitted. Part three has been streamlined. The 14 statements for the applicant's assurance that consultation with private school representatives and representatives of parents of parentally placed private school children with disabilities was removed from the PS 3502. However, the LEA should keep local documentation regarding the details of the consultation during the development and design phase of this proportionate share plan and services. Here are some additional reminders. This schedule must be completed unless the applicant agency is an open enrollment charter school or there are no nonprofit private schools or homeschools located within the LEA's legal boundaries. Part four and part five, proportionate share calculation for IDEA B formula and IDEA B preschool funds should not be updated. When additional funds come into the grant, such as maximum entitlement, the LEA will need to open and resave this schedule. The entitlement of formula funds and preschool funds will be recalculated. The number of students and average allocation per eligible student do not need to be updated. Part seven services describe the process you use to determine which private school students will be served. This section was streamlined by removing the check boxes to describe the types of services and dialogue boxes for describing the differences, if any, and the reason for those differences in services for parentally placed private school children with disabilities and students with disabilities enrolled in the public schools. Part eight includes three choices. Timely and meaningful consultation as required by 34 CFR 300.134 has occurred and the LEA has obtained a written affirmation signed by representatives of participating private schools. Representatives of participating private schools did not provide written affirmation to the LEA within a reasonable period of time. Documentation of the attempts made to obtain written affirmation are attached. 
Consultation did not occur because representatives of private schools home schools did not accept the offer invitation for consult. Part eight documentation of the consultation process requires an attachment if the second box is selected and it must include how you attempted to obtain written affirmation. Part eight now will let you select more than one box if, one, if more than one box applies. The BS 6006 is divided into sections. This is a screenshot of part one, available funding. There are no changes with this schedule. If you click on the view funding carryover, you will be able to see how your funds are broken down into base, population and poverty amounts, as well as maximum amounts, uh, I'm sorry, as well as maximum amount allowed for CEIS, which is your coordinating early intervening services revenue, a reserve, which is 15% of your grant. The total of your IDEA grants will pre-populate into the BS 6006 on the total available funds line. You must budget all of your available funds in order to be able to submit and certify your grants. Part two of the BS 6006 is budgeted cost. The amount for 6,100 payroll cost has to be entered by the applicant and is based on the information in part three and part four. The amounts for all other object codes listed in part two will be populated upon completion of these sections in the application. 6,493 payments to member districts of SSA. This section is used to identify funds that will flow to or be, or be paid out to member districts of a SSA. It does not include the physical agent amount. If you are budgeting CEIS funds, please review the information on this screen at a later date and contact us if you have additional questions. Part three. 6,100 itemized payroll cost. There were no changes on this schedule other than you will only be allowed to enter whole numbers. As a reminder, you will need to put the total budgeted amount for 6,100 on part two. Also remember that CEIS funds do not check if you have gone over the 15% maximum allowed. So be sure to keep track of the total budgeted amount for CEIS for all applicable applicable object codes. You will need this amount for part two on the BS 60116. Once that amount is in the BS 60116 and saved, it will be used to populate the total amount allocated to CEIS line in part two of the BS 6006 schedule. Should you have a position that is not listed in the schedule, you can enter the position title and job description on line 32. There is the option to add other additional lines for this section. Part four, school-wide, is addressed on slides 20 and 21 and had no changes. Karen Slaughter will continue the special ed application at this point. Good morning, slide 22. Part 5, 6200, itemized professional and contracted services, had no changes. Slide 23 and slide 24 give specific reminders for items coded to the 6200 object codes. Most contracted services do require specific approval and must be specifically budgeted in the application. Please remember to be sure your contracted services providers Follow IRS contract rules, which can be provided through your business office or the IRS website. On line five, direct services and related services, please note that more than one service can be entered. If a particular service is not listed, the LEA can enter that information on line 17 and can use the add other button if additional lines are needed. Amounts budgeted are populated in the subtotal section of this section. If there are items which do not require specific approval, such as residential set aside 6223 and others, the total amount would be put on the remaining 6200 professional and contracted services that do not require specific approval line in the subtotal section. 
the grand total listed for this in subsequent sections is also populated on part two, budgeted cost of this schedule once the information is saved. And as a reminder, line 16 is the budgeted amount for CEIS coordinated, uh, sorry, CEIS contracted services. Be sure to keep track of the accumulative CEIS budgeted amounts on all applicable sections as the application does not double check if the total CEIS budget amounts is within the 15% maximum amount allowable. Part six, 6300, itemized supplies and materials, had no changes. Additional information is on slide 26. Again, remember that the budgeted dollars for CEIS would need to be included in part two of the BS 606. Part seven, 6,400 itemized other operating costs. There were no changes to this part. If a budgeted item requires prior approval, additional documentation must be created and kept locally or if applicable, submitted to TEA via grant supports at tea.texas.gov and not attached to the e-grant application prior to any approval of those activities. The next two slides give additional information. Please take a moment to read this slide. But wait, there's more. Please take an additional moment to read this slide. Parts eight and nine, 6,500, itemized debt service had no changes. Be aware that you will not be able to enter a lease purchase that covers less than at least a two-year grant, uh, than at least two-year grant periods. The budgeted amount for the current grant year is entered into part eight, where the description of the property with justification is entered into part nine, no budgeted amounts. Part 10, 6,600, itemized capital outlay, capitalized assets regardless of unit cost. These items always require specific approval. There were no changes in this schedule. Please take a moment to read this slide and be careful to enter the unit cost and quantity in the correct areas on this schedule. Part 11, justification for purchase or lease of portable building. There were no changes for this part. However, please take time to read the reminders on this slide. Part 12, 8911, school-wide programs. There were no changes to this part, but remember, if you selected at the beginning of the BS 6006 schedule in the part two budgeted cost section, 8911 operating transfers out school-wide programs only, and or also checked in part four, 6100 substitute extra duty benefit section line one for school-wide personnel not coded 8911, then this schedule must be completed. That concludes the BS 6006 schedule, and now we will look at the BS 6016 schedule. BS 6016, Fiscal Compliance Requirements. Although there were no changes, we want to take a few moments to discuss this schedule. The information for line one is found on page two of the LEA's most recent Final IDEA B LEA MOE Compliance Review and MOE is Maintenance of Effort Report, which can be located in the TEAL GFFC, which stands for Grants and Federal Fiscal Compliance Application. Remember that MOE is checking to be sure the LEA is in compliance with the supplement not supplant requirement for IDEA B. Line three will only be enabled if the amount in line two 
is less than the amount in line one. Should that occur, the LEA will need to provide in line three the reason or reasons for the lesser amount in line two. Line four is applicable to all LEAs. If the LEA entered state and local expenditures in line one, then the LEA enters state and local funds budgeted in line two, and likewise for local only. The LEA assures in line four that lines one and two are using the same funds and test methods. Please note that the LEA must meet all three of the bulleted criteria in order to be eligible for MOE voluntary reduction. You will notice the asterisk comment from TEA at the bottom of the slide. Idea B final amounts are usually not available until December of the grant year and therefore will not be known at the time of the initial application. TEA recommends that the LEA choose one of the first two options with the understanding that should that information change upon the receipt of the final amount of IDEA B funds, the LEA would make an amendment on this schedule to reflect those changes. We would like to remind you that the amount of money freed up through MOE voluntary reduction must be spent on SLIC activities within the current grant year. This part did not change. Part two of the BS 6016 is where the LEA would indicate the total amount budgeted for CEIS that would have been indicated in applicable parts in the BS 6006. The next few slides are general reminders, links to the resources and TEA's grant administration division contacts. We will be clicking through these slides quickly and encourage you to look at them and review them at your convenience. We have also gone through only some of the slides in your handouts. However, it is strongly recommended that you read these slides in the, in the handouts in their entirety. This is just a general reminder of important dates. Some helpful e-grant navigational tips. A few additional resource links. And the Grants Administration Division at TEA's contact information. As provided at the beginning of this session, this is the link to where your handouts are located. And this is also a list of those handouts. Here are some additional resources for you. This webinar has been recorded and these links along with the recording will be posted to the Region 10 Administrative Support for Special Education programs along with the TEA handouts and answers to any questions we've received through chat. On uh, a later date, we do have to make our recording accessible, so once that is done, we will post all that information to the Region 10 Administrative Support for Special Education. We want to thank you for joining us today and provide you with the Region 10 and the TEA contact. Please feel free to contact us or the TEA should you have any questions, and we hope you have a good day. Thank you, have a great day.